Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm a level two chef. I'm Yuji, I've been a professional chef in Brooklyn, New York for 10 years. Hey, we're making buffalo wings. I'm very excited about this. I'm not looking to get all fancy with it. I just want like Frank's Red Hot and a little bit of butter. I'm actually gonna be baking my buffalo wings, which is a little weird, I know, but hear me out. I am not a professional, so deep frying is risky. Today I am making my version of buffalo wings. They're a little spicy, a little sweet, with some homemade ranch, and it's gonna be banging. Today I'm representing my original version of Japanese style karaage buffalo wing. Karaage is a Japanese comfort food. I'm gonna be marinating this karaage buffalo wing with sake and soy sauce, and I'm gonna finish with potato starch to make it super crispy. This is one of everyone's favorite dish in Japan. These are just your classic buy it at the grocery store wing. You got your one and two bone variety. So to get my wings ready for takeoff, I just have to pat them dry and then put them on the baking sheet. We're not frying them. This gives them a little extra opportunity to get crispy. My opinion, the best buffalo wings come from these, the drumsticks. You, you can see all the meat on this and it's easy to get to. I don't have to like dig through bones and like stick my tongue in weird places. You, you know what I mean. So I'm gonna lay them onto a wire rack. Patting the chicken wings down with paper towel. Literally just get all the extra chicken gunk off. Plus if I didn't do this, what else would I have to do right now? I'll be using the whole chicken wing for my karaage buffalo wing. You're not gonna waste any part of the meat. The first thing I'm gonna do is combine all these ingredients into this bowl of chicken wings. Sake, just enough to cover the whole wings. And then soy sauce as well. You just wanna add a little bit so that the chicken has enough flavor. Then grate the fresh ginger, garlic as well. Wear this shirt, because I figured it was kind of buffalo wingy. Kind of says, fun buffalo wing friend. The next thing I'm gonna do is put it in the fridge, uncovered for like an hour for the skin to get even crispier. Before I throw this into the refrigerator, all I'm gonna do is salt and pepper these things on both sides just to get like a little bit of a base going. Throw these into the refrigerator for like two hours. I wanna make sure that every part of the chicken wing is gonna have a nice marinade. This is my very favorite combination of marinade ingredients. Anything will taste good with this. I'm going to let it soak for about a half hour. Now the next thing I have to do is make my sauce. I'm just making classic buffalo chicken sauce, by which I mean I am using a pre-made, very classic Frank's Red Hot. All I'm gonna do is combine it with a little bit of butter and some Worcestershire. Basically just make Frank's Red Hot a little better. Sorry, Frank's Red Hot, you're already great, but you could be better. I feel like every recipe has Frank's Red Hot. The sweet tooth is my thing. So I found sweet Cholula, which is also vinegar based, so you do get that hot sauce flavor, all just going into the saucepan to simmer for like five to seven minutes. And then while that is warming up, I'm gonna use about like a half a cup of butter. butter. Super easy. You can do it on a weeknight and just be done with it, you know? Get your pub experience without leaving your house. Butter's melted, so I'm just gonna turn this thing off and add my hot sauce. Now, usually I would say like an eighth of a cup, but I kinda like it a little extra saucy, just like me. Buffalo wing has usually sweet, vinegary sauce. I want it to kind of mimic that kind of flavor with simple syrup that is made with dashi, a traditional Japanese stock. It has a high umami content and then used in so many different applications in Japanese food. You start with kombu into cold water. Kombu is a dry kelp, which is grown in northern part of Japan. I'm raising the temperature until it hits 160 Fahrenheit. It's been about 15 minutes. Take kombu out, then bonito flake goes into boiling water, and I'm gonna just let it sit. And as soon as I put it in, I turn it off. Bonito is a type of fish, very similar to tuna, which is cured and dried and aged. You shave it to make this flake. Let this sit for about 10, 15 minutes, and I'm gonna strain it. You're not gonna have only sweetness, but also has a nice umami flavor into the syrup. I'm going to add a little bit of sherry vinegar. Opted for sherry vinegar instead of Worcestershire sauce. It's gonna give sort of like a, a brightness to the sauce without being like overly sweet. Sploosh of our Worcestershire. A little extra like anchovy, salty, umami thing. And my spices, my garlic powder and cayenne. Buffalo sauce is great. I wanted to add my own little twist to it by adding something sweet. That is what the honey is for. And that's gonna go in now. This is 200 gram dashi. I'm gonna add 200 grams of cane sugar straight in here. I'm gonna keep stirring so that the bottom won't get caramelized. It has a very strong dashi smell and a sweetness at the same time. It's a very interesting and a very delicious simple syrup. Cool this off in an ice bath to make sure that this syrup has the right texture. I'm going to add soy sauce. Buffalo wing has a nice acid, 
So I wanted to add yuzu and then balsamic vinegar and a little fish sauce. It's not just uh, sweet. It has a really deep, complex flavor. It has a high umami as well. I think that's good to go. Sauce number one down. Now let's make our dipping sauce. And I opt for ranch because I don't understand the hype behind blue cheese dressing. I'm, I just don't. I'm making my own ranch from scratch. Super simple to make. I'm gonna start with mayonnaise. Next, we got sour cream, a little bit of buttermilk. It's all well incorporated and mixed together. Now I can start adding the other stuff, which is the onion powder or garlic powder, because I can't tell. They look exactly the same. Onion powder goes in, garlic powder goes in. Next is molasses. Kind of an oddball. I know not all ranch dressings have molasses in them. Doesn't add too much sweetness, but you'll know it's there. And I think it's gonna play really well with the honey. All that's left is a tablespoon or two of fresh parsley, some dill weed. Like this dill weed smells so good. And last but not least, chives. And those go into the bowl. It looks like it was homemade. It's a little darker because of the molasses. Yep. I'm going to make shira ae, one of the most healthy dressing you can make. I'm going to use this tofu. We're gonna make it into a very creamy sauce. By boiling tofu, the moisture will come out. It will make it a lot easier to infuse the flavor of the dashi into the paste. And then transfer it to this towel, and I'm gonna squeeze the water out as much as possible. Put this tofu in this container. I'm going to pour the dashi that I made earlier, and then blend it. Add a little bit of white soy sauce. White soy sauce is mainly, mostly from wheat. I wanna keep the color of this white creamy sauce, which is a very important part of the traditional buffalo wing. Also a little bit of sesame oil as well to emulsify everything. Yeah, now you can see the texture is nice and thick. This will make a really nice dipping sauce for buffalo wing. When they asked me, Emily, we need a sauce to go on the side of the wings, I said, you're right, of course you're right, but which sauce? I'm gonna just use blue cheese dressing. That's it, blue cheese dressing. All right, so the next thing I have to do is prep my dressing, of course. Oh, it's already open. Kind of down to one step. Whew. That was tough. If you're having wings, you gotta have some vegetables, right? I opt for cauliflower and carrots. Well, this thing's massive, this thing's almost as big as my head. So I'm just chopping some celery sticks here. You know them. You'll love them. It's celery sticks. <laughs> like... I'm just gonna break this up into florets and chop these little carrots. Easy, nice and easy. I'm going to have these two vegetables on the side. Daikon radish, cucumbers. You can have really nice, fresh, crunchy vegetables between your wings. Cauliflower is just bland enough to where it can kind of be a buffer for anything. You really only need one, depending on how many people you have coming over. This thing's massive. So you can eat the whole celery stick. I'm just gonna use the stickiest bits. Save these, put them in a smoothie, get a little health. But this is the celery sticks. These are the vegetable that's gonna go with my wings. Now it's time to bake my wings. We're just gonna do kind of like a shake and bake thing. So I've got cornstarch, basically to give us a little extra crisp. Putting it all in the bag. Cornstarch, cayenne pepper, Frank's Red Hot is the right flavor, but sometimes you want it a little hotter. Garlic powder, salt, like kind of wiggle that. This is what we call redistribution of flavor wealth. You don't want 1% of the chicken to have 99% of the flavor, you know what I mean? This is a pro move. I know that this is gonna be confusing for some of you, so please do follow along closely. Zip, lock, and then we're going to just give it a little shake. It, uh, shake, dip, dip, uh, shake. There you go. Bam. They're nice and chilly. This spice mix is super simple. I've just got a bunch of spices that I'm throwing into some flour. Paprika, I've got some garlic powder, sazon tropical, and adobo, which are things that I grew up with, and some cayenne pepper. If it's clinging onto the bottom, it deserves to stay there. You don't have to force it, it's all good. That's it. All that's left to do is take these, put them in there, I love doing that. You want it all coated, all covered on all sides, and then just put it gently back on the wire rack. Voila. Drumsticks are looking powdered up, ready to go. Heating up some oil right now, I'm trying to get it to around like 350. Buffalo wings have been sitting here with just this like deliciousness on their skin. I'll probably do like three wings at a time. Leave them for like seven, eight minutes, or at least until the internal temperature's around 165. You're gonna listen to them sizzle, listen to them pop a little bit. A lot of my early jobs were in kitchens. For like probably a year straight, my only job in the kitchen was to fry chicken. Learned a few things, or at least one thing, that typically when the bubbles stop is when the chicken's done, so. <laughs> In a whole year of frying chicken, that's what I picked up. These are done. Take them and transfer them to cool on the wire rack. 
See, it looks nice and crispy. Finish up the rest of these and then toss them in some sauce. I'm going to fry this marinated chicken wings in a combination of sesame and rice brown oil. I'm going to use a potato starch, coat these wings evenly. Potato starch will add really nice fluffy and a crispy texture. Put some fresh down. Healthy spray of Pam. I mean, healthy is not probably the word that we want to use here, but I'm just going to try and like shake them off a little as I take them out of the bag. Get rid of any excess. My wings are ready to go. I'm gonna bake these at 425 for about 20 minutes on each side, or as long as it takes to get them to 165 in the middle because no salmonella. Let's go. Important rules about frying is don't move. If you move it too much before it becomes crunchy, you'll lose the crust. I like to use sesame oil to have an extra aroma to it, but to fry everything in a sesame oil is too much sesame flavor. Rice brown oil is a very good a choice to blend it with something else that doesn't have too much uh, flavor to start with. Once the bottom is crispy enough, I'm gonna flip it so that all the crunch will stay. Five minutes for each side of the wing and then take it out. Purpose of first fry is to cook meat internally as evenly as possible. Second fry is to have a really nice crunchy finish on the crust. The whole process should take only one or two minutes for each side. Done. This smells so good, by the way. My wings are cooked, and it's time to toss them in my sauce. I just like to put them all in, give them a little toss, just like this. Oh, they're still a little warm, and I want to keep them that way. Oh, this looks so good. I'm going to bring the plate over here. I'm already noticing that like, with the addition of the honey, the sauce looks like it's a little sticky. It's a little more viscous. I already have my original buffalo wing sauce. I wanted to use the brush, keep it uh, kept on the wings. Ichimi togarashi is only one kind of red chili pepper. I choose to use this pepper so that I can really make the wings super red, just like the traditional wings. It's not as spicy as it looks. It will balance out with the sauce that I made. These, I'm so excited to eat these. Probably could Google something about plating one of these days, but then, you know, is that the point of me? Other than that, I'm just gonna pop that there, and then I'm gonna take a few of these. We've got our god-tier next-level ranch dressing. I'm going to plate them now. And these are my buffalo wings. Buffalo wings a la Daniel. This is my original version of karaage buffalo wing. Mm. Mm. This is awesome. I just want like a beer in a sports game, you know? There's definitely a little bit of spice with that, as you can see, I'm like heating up a little bit, but the ranch and the honey and the buffalo sauce like cool it down a little bit, gives it a little bit more of a sticky kind of sweetness. Sweet and sour and spicy, never goes wrong. Dip it in a tofu sauce. Sorry, it's a little messy. <laughs> and it's just baked. Oh, <laughs> I just like inhaled some of the sauce up my nose. That's okay, we're good. <laughs> Buffalo wings have nothing to do with the animal, but everything to do with the city in upstate New York, where a small family-operated restaurant gets credit for serving this delicious treat. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Emily used chicken wings that were already broken down, which means separated at the elbow joint into the drumette, which contains the humerus bone, and the wingette, which contains the ulna and radius bones. Both pieces are white meat, which means less myoglobin and fat. Yuji also used the traditional cuts of the drumette and wingette, same as Emily. Daniel used whole drumsticks. This is a larger cut than the traditional wing. It's the lower section of the leg separated at the tarsal joint from the chicken thigh. It's higher in fat and myoglobin, so it's darker meat. Emily's buffalo sauce was straightforward. It was spicy from the Frank's hot sauce that she used. Hot sauce is typically made from spicy chilies, vinegar, and salt. It's fermented, which allows the enzymes in the chilies to break down larger molecules, imparting new flavors and aromas, in addition to the heat, which comes from the capsaicin in the chilies. 
Daniel used Cholula sweet habanero sauce, which is named after the city of Cholula in Puebla, Mexico. It's made from a combination of piquin, habanero, and arbol peppers. The piquin and habaneros are extremely spicy, more than 30,000 Scoville units, which is the standard for measuring heat in chilies. Daniel also added a bit of honey to balance the spiciness. The sugar in the honey can coat some of the heat and pain receptors on your tongue and balance the burn. You know, it's more like yum, 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 and not like ouch, ouchy, ouch, ouch. Yuji's sauce was based on a Japanese broth called dashi. To make it, kombu is soaked in cold water and brought just to below boiling. The cold water allows the umami flavors to be released into the water. Emily dipped her buffalo wings in traditional blue cheese dressing, which adds a nice pungent note to balance the spice and acidic flavors in her sauce. That's it, blue cheese dressing. Put it in a, put it in a little tiny bowl and you're done. Daniel made his own ranch dressing, a combination of herbs with a base of mayonnaise and sour cream. Mayonnaise is an emulsion of phospholipids from egg yolks, vinegar, and oil, and is an excellent base for holding the herbs that he added. Yuji made a sauce based on tofu. This is really level three. He removed as much water as possible from the firm tofu, which increased the fatty creaminess and allowed the proteins in the tofu to combine and bond without interfering with the water. He added his flavorful dashi and a dash of white soy sauce, which is a lighter amber color due to the higher ratio of wheat to soybeans. All three of our chefs coated their wings prior to cooking them. Emily baked her cornstarch coated wings in a very hot oven. There's enough fat in wings to make them crispy when baked. The way that you know a brand is good is if it has a name attached to it, like Frank, like Pam. In this case, thank you, Pamela, for your efforts. Daniel fried his flour-coated drumsticks. Coating the chicken with starches allows the starch granules to absorb water from the chicken. The granules then swell and separate from other starch granules when they hit the hot oil. The starch granules form a rigid and crispy network with a porous structure, which can absorb some of the sauce when the wings are tossed in it. Yuji also coated his wings. However, he used potato starch, which has a coarser granule size, which makes it extremely crunchy. Yuji twice fried his wings in a combination of flavorful sesame oil and rice bran oil. The first time is to cook the wings, and the second time at a higher temperature to dehydrate the starchy coating, impart golden brown colors from the Maillard reaction, and crisp the wings substantially. Wings are a fabulous party food for a crowd or any type of gathering. Next time you're in the mood to bake or fry the best wings, we hope you'll use some of these ideas from our three incredible chefs.